Today I'm going to investigate whether the bow makes a big difference. I've had the chance to try many different kinds of bows. Today we're going to go as simple as possible. This is perhaps what you might call a $7 bow. This one was homemade, handmade by Julian who carved this from a single piece of wood in his backyard. This particular bow type is a molligabet or a molly. And, and there's not much to it. It's a basic piece of wood, there's a bit of a grip and uh, the tips are somewhat tapered. The string is, I think, some leftover string that's roughly tied together. It's a pretty crude bow, but it is handmade with love and passion. Got a big general grouping, um, just hitting the middle mostly. I've got some natural dispersion from finding my mark, but yeah, that's pretty average for a bow. And now let's try a bit of point shooting. We'll go for the uh, left target now, the larger ones. Do a top one first. Let's see if we can gap this in the first shot. Oh, that that touch gold. That was pretty good. Right, spray that left. Oh, it's pretty close. Oh, it's pretty good. Ah, there we go. Right in the middle. Made up for that one. So, how did it feel to shoot this bow? It felt alright. It was a little crude, it's not exactly well polished or well designed or well made, it's good enough for a handmade, homemade bow. And it was satisfying, there's a certain charm to it, the twang of the bow, the shock through the hand, it's the stuff that someone would make themselves and feel proud of, nothing more and nothing less. The thing is, if I shot poorly with this bow and I made the conclusion that this is a crap bow and that this modern bow was better, I'd be called out by every traditional archer for being a dishonest, lying, modern fraud. Because it clearly isn't the bow that's bad, it's me. And objectively speaking, I'm clearly not making use of this bow to its full potential. But if I shoot this bow well, and I don't use this bow to its full potential, can I really say that this doesn't make archery better? You see, this is very common perception, a stigma, especially online, where if you shoot an old-fashioned bow really well, you're a very good archer. But if you shoot a modern bow really, really well, you're an unskilled fraud. Firstly, I want to make it very clear that I'm not taking a shot at traditional archers. You've made your choice, you have your preferences, you know what you like. You don't need some random guy on the internet telling you you're wrong. What I'm going to do is to debunk the stigma and the myths around archery technology and why technology can make archery better. I'm only asking, especially as a non-archer, that you keep an open mind about what we're talking about and don't let your preconceptions and prejudices affect the way you see archery today. Let's briefly talk about technology in an archery context. How do we jump from this to this? If ancient warriors could shoot just as well with this, why would modern archers use this? Why change archery if nothing's broken, everything works fine? So let's briefly talk about what has changed in archery. Despite archery being used for the majority of human history, 
bow technology hasn't changed that much. The original bows were self bows, bows made from a single piece of wood, very much like this one. And this was and still remains one of the most common types of bows. From a modern perspective, this is a low tech bow, but even in ancient times, this was low tech. It was cheap and easy to make. It was so common that you could say nearly everyone had one and when you didn't need it or it broke, you just got rid of it, burned it, got a new one. Now, generally speaking, the only real diversion or advancement from a self bow would be the composite bow uh, or the laminated bow where you would use multiple kinds of wood laid together and then you have composite bows which are made from horn, wood and sinew. Um, these were combined together to make very powerful compact bows. They're more often called horse bows or Asiatic bows. Uh, they were used by the Turks, the Mongols, the Huns, uh, the Persians, the Arabs and so on. Apart from self bows and composite bows, the only other advancement in archery would have been the crossbow and that's a bit of a, a sub-branch of archery. So self bows have been used since the dawn of humanity, uh, composite bows have been around since ancient times, crossbows medieval times, so let's say around the 1100s to 1200s. And more so with bows, more than crossbows, there are very large segments of human history where bows haven't changed. Now that stopped in the 18th century when we see the mass adoption of firearms. Uh, every army rushed to get the latest uh, muskets and the skill of making and using bows was lost. Uh, bows and archery were relegated to a sport practiced by the elite and that's where we see the origins of modern archery from the 19th century to the early 20th century. Now, when archery became an Olympic sport in the 20th century, um, the bows were basically wooden longbows. Um, again, we haven't seen an advance in archery technology until the 1960s, when we start seeing the introduction of aluminium, first through arrows, then through risers in the 1980s and 90s. And since then, we have modern high quality CNC machine aluminium risers like this one. We have carbon risers. We have modern target bows and modern hunting bows. And of course, we have the epitome of archery technology, the compound bow. What's fascinating to me about this timeline is that it reflects a very large break in archery development. We don't really know what would have changed in archery if it weren't for the industrial revolution and the mass production of firearms. Because as we know, warfare today is based around firearms and more advanced weaponry. We don't use bows for war anymore. And yet we now have the materials and the manufacturing methods to create better bows. In a sense, what we see here and here are the results of a what if timeline. What if bows were made today with modern materials and manufacturing? And would they be better than what a historical archer would have used? And the short answer is yes. Hell yes. A historical archer would have killed to use a bow like this. And if this looks stupid to you because it's bright and purple, then something like this, uh, a simple metal hunting bow. This is so far superior to this it's not even a comparison. Let's not be naive about this. There are huge disadvantages to old fashioned bows made using traditional methods. Because firstly, you have to remember the strings were made from natural materials, either natural fibers made from plants or from sinew. And if they got wet, the strings got slack. You lost all the power in the bow and you couldn't use them in wet weather. The wood itself could become warped um, over time, it could set and it would lose power just by being strung. Um, you would have problems especially with composite bows because they use animal glues. Animal glue is water soluble. So if you were in a wet climate and it rained and your bow got soaked because you didn't carry it in a proper pouch, it would delaminate, it would explode if you tried to use it. None of those problems are present in a modern bow. Modular designs made with metal risers, 
composite limbs, synthetic string materials. This is so much easier to maintain and produce than an old fashioned traditional bow. This sort of modern technology would be unimaginable to an ancient archer. Imagine an ancient archer seeing a compound bow. To them, you'll be flinging lightning bolts of arrows so fast that it couldn't be seen with the naked eye. Again, let's not be naive. This $700 bow is better than the $7 bow in nearly every single way. Speed, performance, efficiency, consistency, balance, vibration, ergonomics, everything. A bow like this would perform differently if it was wet or warm or humid. A bow like this would be the same. An ancient archer using a modern bow can shoot faster, further and more accurately than with any bow they had. And if you're having trouble visualizing a bright purple sport target bow because it's visually offensive, then remember, hunting bows are designed with the same technology and often these are the same kinds of risers and limbs but in black or camouflage. Technology hasn't just made archery perform better, it's also made it more accessible. Today, you can access archery much more easily. There are more choices, more components, more personalization so that anyone can start doing archery. It's hard to deny how technology has made archery better, whether you're shooting a traditional bow made from modern manufacturing methods or a modern target bow for a modernized sport. What would be dishonest and disingenuous of me would be if I were to pass judgment on a traditional bow or a modern high-tech bow if I don't use the bow to its purpose and full potential. If all I'm doing is shooting my backyard or my 10 meter shed or doing trick shooting with balls and balloons and drones, then I don't need one of these. This is just as fine, if not more fun, sure. But a $2,000 compound bow with a holographic sight isn't designed for that. It's not meant for that. And likewise, these bows aren't meant for short range casual trick shooting. If you actually take this and use this for what it's meant for, that's target shooting, this will outperform this hands down. This will shoot better, it will feel better. And there are so many people, myself included by the way, who get into archery with this preconception that old technology is what archery is about and it's better. But when we actually use a modern bow, we get very surprised about how good it feels and we can change our minds. Now, as I mentioned before, trad shooters have already made that choice. They've made the preferences very clear and often they will take the bow they like to use and try to be as good as they can with their particular bow. But you can't really fault someone for wanting a little more. To conclude, old technology can be fun, but it doesn't always make archery better. We all have a natural bias towards what we are more familiar with and many of us are reluctant to accept change. We shouldn't simplify archery as old is good and new is bad. It is natural for us to push the limit to make things better or faster or lighter or whatever. That's the same with all forms of technology. And some people are happy the way things are. Technology has undoubtedly made archery better. Whether this actually suits your needs and preferences, that's different. If you're a modern shooter or a traditional shooter or both, you know this as well as I do. But for people who don't do archery, my advice is don't be so quick to judge. You might like this bright purple bow more than you think.